Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Shafiri. In this video, I'm going to learn how you can use mock web server in order to mock responses from the internet when using Retrofit. Let's get started. So the whole point of this video is to teach you how you can use a utility class that is called mock web server, developed by the OK HTTP team at Square, I think. Yeah, and let's pretend you do have some use cases or some view models or some repositories that uses internally a web service, for example, that uses Retrofit in order to accomplish certain stuff. In order to test that repository, we can maybe mock or create a fake of that interface of the Retrofit, and that would work perfectly fine. But we want to create a realistic mock that will mock the responses, the actual HTTP responses when using Retrofit. So let's get started. So the actual mock web server is found here. Like this is really cool. As they said in the motivation, this library makes it easy to test that your app is doing the right thing when making HTTP and HTTP calls. Like this is the new thing. Because previously when you fake something, you can, for example, experiment the cases when there is an error, for example, 400, 404, for example, 203 response code, for example, you can't do that. You can basically return responses or throw exceptions, but here you can kind of simulate the actual network stuff. And the beauty, we can write this as unit tests. We don't have to rely on instrumented tests. So here is how it works. Mainly, we are going to create a mock web server, right? And then we are going to tell Retrofit when creating our interface, we are going to tell it to use this thing. And this will be running, and then we can set up or enqueue responses. For example, we are going to set the body, we are going to set the response, we are going to set the code, the actual code, the response code, and similar stuff. And then you simply do your thing, and then you can assert stuff. Like we are going to see that in a minute. As I said, you can specify headers. This is not feasible with a normal fake or normal Mokito or Mok for Kotlin. Right? You can stimulate slow network. This is also pretty fine. Like the interface, like I suggest checking this web page, the interface and the API is really cool. So you can check it. Also, you can specify cases or conditional, like in queue multiple responses that would work perfectly fine. We're going to see examples right now. So here, first we'll start by going to the build file. And here we need to add dependencies. Of course, make sure you have the dependencies for retrofit. Okay, HTTP, JSON, or whatever, right? And we need that dependency, which is mock web server. And here's the thing. I do have here a view model that uses internally a post service. This post service is nothing but retrofit interface, right? And it has something called fetch posts. And in this post, it's going to return us this post. We are making sure that in the JSON, we will have this things here, the variable names here. Right? This is the post you are going to return it. And in the view model, we are simply delegating. There is nothing special about this code. But the thing here, we want to test this post view model. We can test this post view model while faking this post service, but we are going to use an actual and more realistic fake. So let's start by creating the test. You can do that and create the test for the web service. You can use JUnit5, no problem. And let's go. Here it will be as part of the unit test, and we will have this thing. Well, I'm going to use JUnit for no problem. All right, so let's first start by creating a test. I'm going to test the normal case, like returning some actual posts. Okay, testing, normal. This is the normal test. But here we will start to define some variables. First, we need to define our mock server, right? So it will be val mock web server, like that. It will be simple mock web server, like the following. And then we need to create our post service, this one, the actual one. And we need to create the view model. We need to pass one to one, right? So here is how you can do it. You can, well, I'm going to use late init var for the view model, because I'm going to create it late. And also the post service it will be also late init. And then I'm going to use a setup function in order to set everything. Now for the post service, its creation is a little bit different because we are relying on Retrofit to do that, okay? So here in Retrofit, there is a builder and the normal way to create Retrofit instances, right? So at the end, we have to do the build and we have to do the create, and then we can pass our post service class like that in order to create. But here we are going to tell here at the configuration from for the post service to request when requesting the server to request the mock web server and the mock web server will give it the response back. So here we do the following. We do something called base URL as normal. Here we can pass the base URL. We are going to use the mock web server and there is something called the URL and here we can pass dot slash like that. Awesome. 
but here this needs to be done before the build sorry after the build like that and then we can assign also a client and here we need to create a client which is the OKHTP OK client private val which is client let's call it client and it will be OKHTP OK client dot builder dot normal build my thing special okay and then we can use our client and then since you are receiving responses in JSON, we need to convert the responses from JSON to the actual class, which is, right in our case, which is the normal post, right? For that, we need also to set up the converter. So we need add converter factory, this one. And here I'm going to use JSON converter factory dot create. That's pretty much for the creation of the retrofit. This is the normal way on how to create retrofit instances in our production code. It's not something big. And then when creating the view model, we can create our post view model. And then here we can pass the dependency, which is post service. And here simply we want to do what we test the view model. Where is the view model? Exactly. We want, for example, to get all the posts. This is just used for the sake of experimenting. Usually we do have an MVVM aspect in which trigger things, and then we receive it as UI state. But this is merely for explanation purposes. Let's pretend that this view model will get us some result. Here, since we are using coroutines to do that, I'm going to use run blocking like that and then i'm going to do some setup and some assert so how we can do the setup first we need to create something called the mock response okay so there is something called mock response and you simply create it and then you attach things to it you can set the headers you can set the body you can set the response code right for the response code it will be 200 this is normal thing and then i can set the body right and here for the body, I'm going like the beauty, you can do the following. You can create file of JSONs and put them in the assets in the directory of the test and then read the files here. Here, I'm going to use my normal string templates and I'm going to pass a whole big uh, JSON. Here is the JSON I'm having, right? So it is user one, it's a user ID title, like this is something generated from chat GPT or something. So this isn't something big, you can do it like that. And maybe we can, a little bit something like that awesome so here's how we can uh, set the body now what we want to do after creating that mock like this is just creation we need to record it somewhere right this is the response and then we need to tell the mock web server right in order to include that response so how we can include the response simply we pass the response we have created now whenever we request something from the web server right it will get us this response back so i can assert the following i can assert that equals for example here i'm passing i think passing four posts so i can assert that they are four and then i can do the following i can check the result the result size and this should work pretty fine we can run it to see if this working now there is other things that you can specify i'm going to show you in a minute let's test pass awesome normal test is passing usually can do three here to check if you are testing the right thing and then but i actually are testing the right thing now there is things here you can start by doing something like that and there is a method called start okay here there is this method that will help you start on specific port right usually it start by default when creating it so this is an extra method if you want to specify specific port right this is the first thing and there is a method called shutdown also so usually we use this methods both at the start and at the end on, on the teardown, okay? And now we can specify another response. Let's pretend we do have a problem in our HTTP response, okay? Let's pretend it is, for example, an empty response, or let's say exactly we can do something like that, which is bad request like that. And we can specify, for example, 400, okay? And test, for example, failure when post fetching, okay? That's pretty much it. And here, since our get all post, it won't work, it will throw an exception. We need to specify that we are waiting for an exception. Usually we do that here, and the exception, expected exception, we are waiting for it, is the following. We are expecting HTTP, if I remember well, HTTP exception, right? I think we can specify HTTP exception, but I'm going to see if I get the exception or not. Okay, so I can run this. And see if I'm getting an exception. And using this kind of mock web server, we can do something great. We can do test driven development in a very good way. We can drive the development of that view model in a good way since we can simulate a lot of other things related to HTTP stuff. Here you can see the error HTTP 400 client error. 
OK, so we need to see if you are getting that error. Either we have to approach this here, since I'm not going to modify the view model itself. Usually here, we do something like following. We will do some try and catch and see if we have problem, right? Let's catch HTTP exception, not H exception, HTTP exception, like that. And here you can see if there's, I'm going to return empty list, like that. Well, I can't return anything. And now what I can do, I can do the following. I can assert that we have an empty list. Assert true that the result is empty. Okay, now I can run all my tests and see. Awesome, all my tests are passing. You can do it that way or you can specify here in the exception, but usually in case development, you won't have that error. You need to specify how you can solve this issue. But you can build this actual code here and the algorithm based on the different tests you can exercise when doing test-driven development, of course. Okay, that's pretty much it. You can see a lot of things going here. Like there is a lot of things related to mock web server, right? As I said, for example, you can do throttle body. This will simulate slow network. This good thing for testing timeouts. And you can use, of course, this thing into instrumented test, right? So if you want to have some end-to-end -end test, not end-to-end -end test, usual end-to-end -end test, you would use the exact implementation and the exact production server. But at least in integration testing and big kind big chunk of testing of UI testing, you can use this thing in order to test variation and the happy path, bad path of your UI, okay? And uh, as I said, there is this dispatcher. This is a good thing to serve and to use many responses from the request. This is a good thing. And also, I think, yeah, definitely you can check it. This would be a really good thing. For here, for example, if you can enqueue many things, for example, this one, this one, this one. So the first one, you are going to get this thing. The second, you are going to get this thing. And third time, you are going to get this yo doc okay so this is pretty much it for this mock web server i hope you understand it if you have any question please let me know in the comments below thank you very much for watching this video to the end don't forget to subscribe to the channel have a great day and see you in the next video